If it feels too cold to play outside recently, the Springfield Museums has an option for you. Toytopia is an exhibition featuring larger-than-life toys, hands-on play, and immersive learning at the Wood Museum of Springfield History. Museum President Kay Simpson stopped by the studio to offer me details. We were really excited about the availability of Toytopia. It came to us on short notice, and we snapped um, at the opportunity to get it for the Wood Museum of Springfield History because the connection uh, to Springfield history, specifically Milton Bradley and the advent of board games and the game industry in general, which is so important to Springfield, was just a natural tie-in. Milton Bradley was a man, and he had that factory, and he started with the, the checkered game of life is the full name of the board game. But that was his first game, and he started it here in Springfield, right? He started it here in Springfield. It was very, very successful. He started out as a lithographer, as you might know, and he actually created a portrait of Abraham Lincoln without his beard, and then uh, Abraham Lincoln grew the beard, and that kind of <laughs> made it, um, his likeness uh, was no longer relevant. Uh, so then he developed this board game, which was instantly popular, and, and really started him um, creating and producing and manufacturing board games. And so Toytopia, I think the word, if you're going to just attach one to the exhibit, big, right? <laughs> Lots of big toys in the exhibit, whether it's a giant Etch-a-Sketch, um, you have an arcade, you have a, a life-size dollhouse. What is the, the sort of oversized nature of the, the event? Well, I think it just creates more drama, more excitement. I think one of the things that's so great about this exhibition is that it's intergenerational. A lot of us grew up with these games. Our parents grew up with the games. I mean, we're really tracing a history of 100 years in the making. So there's a lot for people to relate to, a lot of nostalgia associated with this show. It's not just, you think sometimes it, toys, kids, but sounds like the exhibit is not just for kids. I think adults like to play as much as kids do. And I think they really love to um, make memories with their kids um, based on really happy times in their lives and playing with games is part of that. Yeah, what, and what do you think that it, it is about toys and games that people connect with? It's their childhood. It's having fun playing a board game. Um, board games were great because it was something you usually did with your friends or family. So it was a sense of community, I think, that was really developed around board games. Toys um, you associate with really happy times playing with them yourself or with your friends or with your family members. You know, it just conjures up, um, I think, memories that are um, really enjoyable for people. When people think of museums, I think they often think hands off, don't touch, stay behind this stanchion, don't go beyond this line, and this toy exhibit is in a museum. How are you handling that? Well, the Toytopia exhibit is completely interactive, it's completely immersive, and everything that is in that exhibit you can play with. Um, the notion of an oversized dollhouse that you can go into. So it's this giant dollhouse and you can go in it and play with the small dollhouses. There's a tiny kitchen that you can play in. And so everything is um, something that you can touch, something you can play with, something that you can have fun with. Uh, a lot of the other exhibits in the museums, we don't have people. Um, touch, but I think that people understand. You know, if you see stanchions, you know you're not supposed to go and sit in the Rolls Royce automobile. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this is the Toytopia really kind of flips that on its head. And exactly. I understand when it opened recently, it's very popular, so you actually have time ticketing, which can, allows you to control how many people are in the space at once. Exactly. But also give more people the room and time to play in the way that you're saying, right? Exactly. You know, if you're playing in the video arcade on the retro video games, you really don't want to have a crowd behind you and feel like you have to limit your time. <laughs> move it along, move it along. Here we go. Right? Exactly. And we first experimented with time tickets with the Dr. Seuss Museum, which, as you know, we opened in June of 2017. And we found that that was a really good way to just um, give people time to have fun in the museum and not feel rushed and be able to do other things on our campus. I mean, the beauty of the Springfield Museums is we have five museums 
there's a lot to do and a lot to see when you're at the quadrangle. I want to have us look at the history of Milton Bradley a bit more sure. because it's it has a storied history here in Springfield. It had a big factory where lots of toys, whether it was that first board game, Life, were being produced. But he went on Connect Four, Hungry Hungry Hippos, Mouse Trap, so many games attached to this company, this man. Twister also was one of those, and Twister has kind of a fun story attached to it, right? Yes, and we were talking about that before we, we started filming. Um, Eva Gabor went on the Johnny Carson show in the, in the 1960s, and she demonstrated how to play Twister. And it was really sensational, and it was just the greatest marketing ploy because the um, Twister became instantaneously successful. Yeah, and I think also that's one of the interesting things about toys these days is while they're a way to keep kids occupied and teach them, there's also sometimes that bleed over into a promotional object or material. Do you address that? Is it addressed in any way in the exhibit? Yes, it is. So there are some of the um, displays that talk about um, how there are movies that are really based on toys, like Mr. Potato Head is an example. Transformers. Transformers, um, Toy Story, uh, a lot of movies that have been based on toys. And, and also another example is um, Concentration, which really started out as a game show on TV. And then it was manufactured into a game that people could buy. And long after uh, the TV show was no longer popular, you could still buy Concentration. So it outlived the TV show that it was based on. So sort of the flip side of that. And we talked a little bit about the history of Milton Bradley. And the museum is also making that connection, right? So you have the Toytopia Absolutely. exhibit, but there's another exhibit uh, that people can explore to learn more about the history of toys in this region. We'll talk about that. In, in our uh, Wood Museum of Springfield History in the permanent collection, we have um, uh, an exhibit called Made in the Valley, and that uh, showcases the history of Milton Bradley. It was really interesting. I mean, he did manufacture games, but he was also really interested in the kindergarten movement education and education. Was huge for It was him. huge for him. As a matter of fact, he was giving away educational supplies, and that was not great for the business model of the company. Um, so he really had to, his business associates um, really got him to think about producing games that could be sold um, so the company would continue to be successful. Another connection to the museum that I want to ask you about that is not related to Toytopia is the Dr. Seuss uh, license plate, something new that's come out. And I've noticed on the website that people can click on that and find a way, if they want, a Dr. Seuss license plate to get one for themselves. But you have a number, you have a goal you have to reach before they'll actually roll out, right? How does it work? We have to sign up 750 people for the license plate program to get them to go into production. Um, so we're very excited about this. We just got approvals, um, as you um, just mentioned. Um, we got approvals from the Registry of Motor Vehicles and Dr. Seuss Enterprises. The license plate is really cute. It has an image of the cat in a hat on it. So who wouldn't want to have a cat in a hat license plate? And the other thing that we're excited about is it says Seuss in Springfield. So we feel it's a way of not only uh, promoting our museum, but promoting the city of Springfield.